actually excluding you and everybody else. They're saying that no one can be saved except that they're actually Israelis in the flesh. That is a lie from the pit of fire. Romans 9, 10 onwards well, tells us that as true as true is right. Yeah, because you took one verse out of context. Now, we can read the whole thing. We can read the whole thing. It speaks of the spirit. What it says is that a man, a true Jew now under the new covenant is actually when you see they're not listening because they don't want you to know the truth. They want you to be limited and bound right to slavery, to that flesh which they're actually preaching about. Now that we're under the law of grace and the spirit, the true Israelites are the ones that are circumcised of the heart, not of the flesh. That is why in Joel 2.28 in the Old Testament, the Lord says that in the last days He will pour out His spirit on all flesh, your hands made in a service. Brother, there's servants. If you're going to tell me, wait a second, because I listened to you for 10 minutes, you're going to tell me that only the Jews Right in the flesh, or only the Israelites, however you call them in the flesh, can be saved. Then, how come God is speaking about their handmaids and their servants, which the, the, the Spirit of God will be poured out on them for them to be saved? Then you go to Book of Acts to see Cornelius, who's a Gentile. He becomes crafted in, right, because of faith, because he believes in the finished work of Jesus. But well, there's absolutely no way that what you're saying is actually making any sense at all. This is a lie from the pit of fire. Jesus said in Ephesians 2.14, guys, that his body was broken on the cross, so he would bring the wall of hostility down. These guys are creating division by saying that only a group of people can be saved, and they're excluding everybody else. They're saying that if your father is not an Israelite, and if we can't trace you back to your father's genealogy, then you, my friend, you're not saved. That's what they're that, saying. That, that, that is hypocrisy, and that is a lie from the pit of fire. That's not, that's not These guys have distorted and tamed the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is spiritual. It is not fleshly. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What's the requirement? You must believe on the finished work of Jesus. You must believe that you're a sinner and repent from your sins and turn to Christ. That is the number one condition for you to be saved. They're preaching a, a bla they're, they're preaching blasphemies. They're distorting the Word of God. They're discrediting. And they're calling themselves real Hebrews. What a shame. These guys are liars. They're children of Satan. Jesus said in the last days they will teach the teachings of demons. That's what they're doing. And they're they're calling themselves real Hebrews, what a shame. And they're calling themselves real Hebrews, what a shame. Honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechah Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, fellow followers and believers of this faith, and Shalom to the elect. So, um, I've seen this video. I don't know the brothers, they look like a Great Millstone Camp, and the guy titled it, and that's why I did the video. He titled it "Hebrew Israelites Silenced." Now you heard him say, "I let you speak for ten minutes. Now let me speak." So the time he took to make let himself speak, he made sure he recorded his three minutes of fame. So that's not the whole story, but hey, it is what it is. Another thing I noticed is at the end of the video, okay, this guy said. Uh, these guys claiming to be Hebrew Israelites. Well, how do you know they're not? Deuteronomy 28 and 64 says the Israelites are scattered among amongst all nations from one end of the earth even to the other. Acts the second chapter says it as well. The book of Ezekiel says it. You can even go to the book of Revelation 7. So the Israelites are scattered. So how do you know that these, these brothers ain't the Israelites, which we believe they're Israelites? But this is the racism. And this is why they title it Black Hebrew Israelites. Because in order to be a Black Hebrew Israelite, there must be a White Hebrew Israelite. This is how they think. To keep you in the mindset of white supremacy. So we're going to dive right into it real quick. A couple of scriptures came to my mind right away when this man was speaking. Right away. He first went to Romans. I mean, Salakia. He went to John 3.16, God so loved the world. Well, I did further research on this scripture, God so loved the world. We all know it. A five-year-old knows it. Um, now, you go down, God so loved the world. It goes to Cosmos. Um, and it says, probably from a base of a word, G. 2865 right this is what it says this is what it says it says to take care of provide for to take up carry away in order to care for and preserve right to carry away to bear off 
to carry, bear, bring to, to carry away for oneself, to carry off what is one's own, to bring back. It also says to receive and obtain the promises and the blessings, right? To receive what was previously one's own, to get back, to receive back, to recover, which goes into reconciliation. So this is clearly God so loved the world, he's trying to bring back the Israelites. It says it right here. To bring back, to recover, to take up and carry away in order to care for and preserve. This is why he said in Matthew 10 and 5 what he said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I just thought that was interesting, um, uh, that scripture right there. So let's go back to Ephesians 2. He said 2 and 14 or something like that. Let's go to 2 and 11. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Who is he talking to? In time past? Gentiles in the flesh? Well, in order to understand what this book is talking about, you got to go to the beginning. You got to go to the beginning of the book. Right? Let's see here. It says, um, it says here, Paul the Apostle, Yahweh Shah, by the will of Yahweh, for to the saints which are at Ephesus. This is Ephesians 1 and 1. So then we, that's how you know who he's talking about and who he's talking to. And we'll show more. Right? It says, ye were Gentiles in time past, who are all called uncircumcision, by which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So you had Israelites who were definitely following uh, Hellenistic practices, different religions, different faiths, and even some were still Israelites and knew they were uh, Jews, but didn't accept the Messiah, right? So you had variations of heathen men it said that 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 time ye were without Yahweh. this is what it's talking about being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenants of the promises having no hope and without Yahweh in the world now when you go into the, what happened to paul you can keep reading it was talking about the hell he was catching and how he was shipwrecked and um his own fellow countrymen came at him why was he doing that because what he was preaching right it says but now Yahweh says Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off made nigh in the blood of Yahweh for he is our peace oh who's he talking to who hath made both one have broken down the middle wall of uh, partition between us having abolished in the flesh and amenity, even in the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So again, these Christians that say, forget the law, see that the law was abolished, it doesn't matter. No, it was these men, these people that was following the laws, so-called, they made the law carnal, and they got away from the power of Yahweh. So this is why his son here, and this is why we say Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shah. Because that's how we got it back. Right? You people don't accept the power and the strength of the Most High. It says, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Right? And of the household of Yahweh. Because you had the Jews and you had the unbelieving Jews, so to speak. You had the heathens, right? You had the Jews and then you had the Hellenistic Jews who made the practice of the Greek, their tongue. So it was more than technically two types of Jews, you know, which Paul was dealing with. Um... Let's go on to a little commentary. Well, first, let's go back to Ephesians 2. Wherefore, remember 
ye being, who's the ye? Being in time past Gentiles. Right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. It's saying the same thing. Carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So whenever they bring these scriptures up, it's easy work, right? It's easy work. Now, I don't know if the brothers, they let him speak or whatever, but um, these these Christians, what they're doing is they, them vocabulary nights, they're coming up and they'll try to over talk you and really best to just keep teaching, right? Because we ain't going to entertain that unless you deal with it on a on a you know on a level because that's all they're going to do they're going to get their 15 seconds of fame and then they wait it and then put up the video and and he admitted i gave you 10 minutes to speak let me speak so he gets his two minutes to speak and then say he silenced them that's the wickedness and the craftiness of edom right and this i don't he looks i don't know who he is more likely a jake almost looks like Ishmael, but uh, he um, he used the craft, you know, he threw some craft in there. Anyway, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1, Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the clouds, right, and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the seas, right? So clearly we could clearly see through, throughout the Bible who he's speaking to. And just because the universalism is there when it says all men or Gentile, Greek, Jew, Greek, when it, in most cases, those words was Grecian, but they put Greek there because the transliteration from the, the, the original language to the old English to the today's English it says Greek now the old English said Grecian sometimes Greek spelled differently but Grecian which Grecian when you look it up means Hellenistic Jew and Greek means Hel Hellene right so they got it twisted with this universalism and that's what Gentile is that's why Gentile can mean an actual heathen nation and it could mean a heathen Israelite right Gentile stranger can mean a strange a heathen nation, right? And and a stranger can be a heathen Israelite or an Israelite that don't particular particular area, partake in a particular area. So we go back to Ephesians two, and then he says, um, "The Lord has uh, grafted um, handmaidens, everything to come." And let's see Isaiah forty nine twenty two. This is the first scripture came into my mind. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in thy arms, and daughters shall be carried upon thy shoulders, their shoulders. Now they actually read this right now. And they got people coming from other lands, and they come through the water, right? And they act like they fulfilling the prophecy, and they'll go up into that land, y'all know what land I'm talking about, and make it seem like it's them. But watch else what else it says. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Right? Let's go to Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So this is why you have people that planted, kicked other people out and planted themselves there to say it was them. And set them in their own land. <laughs> I guess NATO and the League of Nations, right? Anyway, and the strangers shall be joined with them, which is the Israelites. Again, we've seen this in other, various other scriptures that said that ye were strangers. Acts 13 says ye were strangers. Right, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in a land of servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives 
who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. How do you get any clearer than that? I don't think you can. You can't get any clearer than that. Let me read a little commentary here. It says, Wherefore remember that you were past Gentiles in the flesh. This, uh, with what follows in the next verse, the apostles put the converted Ephesians in the mind of. That's what he was doing, wasn't he? Converting the Israelites? In order to magnify the grace of God, Yahweh, in their conversion. Now, we'll do videos like this, as I've done in the past, and them people still come on there, well, God, God loves all nations. God loves all nations. It's hard for them to believe that, and that's what Stockholm does to you. They don't know the mind of the Lord. They don't know what the Lord, you know, has put out and has taught. They can't see it. All their life, and you know who pretty much does this. The people who are oppressed the most is the people who want to try to save their oppressors the most. Right? You don't see any other nation really fighting to save everybody but us. The most oppressed. And that's the same as having a dog and you kick him out and the dog will keep coming back. Hell, you kick the dog out and somebody fighting you, the dog will still protect you. Anyway, the apostles put the converted Ephesians, the apostle put the converted Ephesians in the mind of in order to magnify grace of Yahweh in their conversation and to humble them in the view of their former state and condition and to teach them that they could never be saved by the works of theirs, right? This is what he's talking about. Uh, that's why he was trying to bring them back to Yahweh. It was about the faith. But it doesn't say to get rid of the law, and that's what these Christians teach. As Romans 6 say, no, God forbid. Particularly, he would have them call to mind that they were in time past Gentiles. That's what we just read. Carried away to these dumb idols, which does not so much regard the nation and country they were of. You look up the word uh, Hellenistic, they was, it was Israelites that were scattered, right? Even to this day, who remember in Deuteronomy 28 says, Thou shalt have other gods, and thou shalt worship them in wood and stone. Right? It says they were Gentiles still, but their state and condition, they had been very blind and ignorant. So, and for order them to be very blind and ignorant and to be reconciled and brought back, they would have to been in a condition at one time in their life or through the generations where they didn't need to be brought back because they were there. You know, if somebody kicked you out of your house, right, and then you want to bring them back, you're going to call them to come back to your house. But they was once there in order to come back. Right? Right? They were blind, ignorant, and were Gentiles who knew not Yahweh. They had been, you see the wild olive branch. They had been very wicked, profligate sinners of the Gentiles, right? See, this is where the word Gentiles get confusion. Because you had Gentile Israelites sinning with Gentile heathens or of other nations. And they had been Gentiles in the flesh, not according to the flesh or by birth. Right? For so they were them, but in some time of their unregency, they were carnal minded, the things of the flesh. So you get to the point. You had different Gentiles. Okay? And a lot of these scholars don't want to admit it. Only the ones that are pro um, Israel, they will admit it. You know? But some of them want to universalize the practice of religion and worship. And you can Google this stuff on universalism and what they did and why our people are so goddamn confused. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.